Welcome to your January 20th Wednesday webinar. Today is going to be a historical day for many reasons. And uh, my name is Wendy Tumpa. I'm the Director of Training in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm joined today by my co-host, Oh, you muted yourself, Wendy. You're yeah, muted. Wendy, Wendy. Some, somewhere along the line, your mic muted itself. Holy cow, which word was last? I didn't touch anything either. <laughs> you were introducing your wonderful co-host. Ah, oh, my wonderful co-host is Maggie Knapp coming from the great state of New York. She is in the Western area. Um, you've probably seen Maggie before. So welcome to Miss Maggie. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us. I don't know if you're here because it's a New Year's resolution or because we just happen to be talking about a ninja principle. Ninja catches the ear and eye of many a realtor. But today we're going to explore developing good habits. And we know how challenging it can be to develop good habits. And today we're going to develop good habits in terms of what ninja selling calls the Ninja Five, okay? The Ninja Five as a habit to successful business practice, okay? Um, so we're about three weeks into the new year, right? Today's the 20th, right? Three weeks tomorrow. So did any of you create a new year resolution? You shake your head up or down, or thumbs up, thumbs down, put it in the chat. Did anyone do a new year's resolution? Andy says, nope, not me. Jan, Deb, they're shaking their heads. Roseanne's like, no way. Forget the New Year's resolutions, right? Okay, so many people do make them. And of course, even more so do not, right? And the many that do not, like me, I do not make them. We do so because we realize from our experience, our practice, that although we have really good intentions when we make them, we often fail to keep them, right? And no one likes to fail, right? So we want to take a look at that and try to overcome. We have good intentions, but we do often fail in realizing our goals because developing new habits is so challenging. This time of year, it is most recognizable in the world of fitness, right? You go to a gym, gym memberships are through the roof in January, right? Um, there's a surge and you know the regular gym goers annoyed because it's so much more crowded at the gym because all these people with New Year's resolutions are, are now there working out and taking up the equipment. We see more gym commercials at the end of December than any time throughout the year because we know that people will set New Year's resolutions to, to lose weight, to get in shape, to feel better, to improve your health overall, whatever it may be. However, we know that often by February, that gym crowd's gonna thin out a little bit, right? The regular gym goer knows that they just have to get through January because all these people are going to disappear by February, right? So with that in mind, we want to do better, okay? We want to develop good habits that will stick, okay? So we're going to start by watching a video. And here's my encouragement for you with the video to stay engaged. You have a writing utensil. And excellent. You have something to write on. Piece of paper, a tablet, a printer paper, whatever it is. Get something to write on, okay? So to help you stay engaged through this video, I want you to number your paper one through nine, leaving some space, like double space, one through nine. And I want you to write down the nine steps of habit formation, okay? This will help you stay engaged as we watch the video. Any questions before we get started? No, we're good? All right, I'm going to um, share a YouTube video. So what that means is I have to apologize in advance because you know with YouTube videos, ads are gonna pop up. <laughs> 
So I will skip through the ads as quickly as possible, but they will pop up. So we're just gonna start with the video, not the PowerPoint and go right into it. Have your writing utensil ready to stay engaged and write down the nine steps to habit formation. Can everyone see the video so far? Yes. Good, excellent. Let's talk about how to build better habits that actually stick. Number one, focus Whoops, my bad. on one habit. A concept known as the ego depletion will be one of your biggest obstacles to habit formation. The ego depletion is a person's diminished capacity to regulate their thoughts, feelings, and actions. Ego depletion impacts our ability to form new habits because our supply of willpower is spread out among all areas of our lives. Because of this, it's important to work on only one habit at a time. That way, your store of willpower can be channeled into completing that one habit, increasing your odds of success. So the question is, what one new habit do you want to form? Identify it now and learn everything you can about how to do it right. Become an expert in this activity and do a deep dive to self-educate yourself about this activity. Then you can move on to the next step. Step 2. Commit to a minimum of 30 days. Some people say it takes 21 days to build a habit, while other ones claim it'll take up to 66 days. The truth is the length of time varies from person to person and habit to habit. You will find that some habits are easy to build, while others require more effort. My advice is to commit to a specific habit for the next 30 days or a month to keep it simple. During this time, focus all your energy around being able to complete this habit. Step 3. Anchor your new habit to an established routine. A habit shouldn't be based upon motivation, fads, or temporary desire. Instead, you should associate this habit with behavior that you already do. To make this happen, we recommend using a strategy that comes from B.J. Fogg's Tiny Habits concept. What he recommends is to anchor the new habit to something you already do on a daily basis. Here are a few examples. After I get to my car from work, I will change into my workout clothes and walk for 10 minutes. After brushing my teeth at night, I will write down everything I ate for the day. After I drop off the kids at the babysitter, I will stop by the gym for my yoga class. You get the idea. Simply find an established routine and then anchor the new habit to it. Step 4. Take baby steps. The danger of relying on motivation alone is that you don't have a backup plan for those unexpected challenges in life. So the secret to lifelong habit formation is to take baby steps that turn a new habit into automatic behavior. The idea here is to create micro-commitments where you can stay consistent and never miss a day. You will discover that with a low level of commitment, it will be easier to start this habit and complete it each day. Here are a few examples of micro-commitments you can make. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Killen. I have my own medical practice, and I've been using Doodly now for a few weeks. Walking for just five minutes a day, writing one paragraph of your book, eating one serving of vegetables each day, making one sales call to a prospective customer, wake up each morning 10 minutes earlier. Sure, these activities might seem overly simplistic, but that's why it's a powerful concept. When it's easy to get started, you will build momentum and will often do more of the habit than you originally intended. Number five, don't break the chain. There's a popular habit-related story that supposedly involves comedian Jerry Seinfeld. When talking to a budding comedian, Seinfeld gave a simple piece of advice. Set aside time every day to create new material. The key here is to never miss a day, even if you're not in the mood. At the start of every year, Seinfeld hangs a one-year calendar on his wall and makes a big red X on the calendar for every day he writes new comedy material. He doesn't have to write a lot of material every day. What's important is to do something every single day without fail. His focus is to never break the chain. Marking X's on the calendar encourages you to complete your desired task every single day. The more you look at an unbroken string of red X's, the more compulsion you feel to get over any initial resistance and force yourself to get started. This step will help eliminate the excuses we all make for skipping a day. Yes, there will be days when you're tired, busy, 
overwhelmed, sick, hungover, or depressed. All of these can be valid reasons to skip a habit. But if you focus on the baby steps that I just mentioned and never break the chain, then it will be easy to create a sticky habit. Step 6. Plan for obstacles and challenges. Every new habit will have obstacles, but you can plan for these challenges and learn how to effectively adapt to them. To get started, here are a common obstacle that you may encounter. Not enough time. Experiencing pain or fatigue. Bad weather conditions. Not enough room or space for the habit. The cost of the equipment related to the habit. Or self-consciousness. A simple way to respond to obstacles is to prepare for them ahead of time. And you can do this by using something called the if-then planning concept. When you encounter a challenge, use this experience to create an if-then statement for how you'll respond the next time it happens. Here are a few examples. If I check the weather when it's raining, then I will work out at the gym instead. If I don't have time for an important goal, then I will wake up 30 minutes earlier every day and work on it before anything else. If I have a really bad day at work and don't feel like working out, I will still walk briskly for at least 15 minutes. Step 7. Create accountability for your work habit. Track your efforts and make public declarations about your new habit. According to the lessons learned from the Hawthorne effect, you're more likely to follow through with the commitment when you're being observed by others. So to stick to this new routine, let others know about your efforts and goals. Here are a few ways to do this. Post updates on social media accounts. Use apps like Chains and Coachmate to track your process. Work with an accountability partner. Join a community that related to your new habit. Post regular updates on an online forum related to the habit. Never underestimate the power of social approval. You will stay committed when you know that you will be held accountable for following through on a new habit. Now, before we move on, I recommend checking out our video that profiles 15 habit tracking apps. I've linked it at the top of this video and in the description box of this video. Number 8. Reward important milestones. A new habit doesn't have to be boring. Instead, you can build a reward system in the process so you can celebrate those important milestones. The reward you pick is up to you. You could check out a new movie, enjoy a night out with your significant other, or treat yourself to an item you've always wanted. To learn more, we'll link to an article with 155 ways to reward yourself. It's easy to underestimate the value of having fun while building habits. Often, looking forward to a specific reward will help you overcome those challenging obstacles. Step 9. Build a new identity. The final step is to turn this habit into a core part of your identity. Only then will you stick to it without the constant need for reinforcement. James Clear often talks about something he calls the identity-based habits. The idea here is that you can build a lasting habit by making it a reflection of who you are on the inside. Simply put, you need to believe that the habit is part of what makes you a unique person. Clear recommends making a habit part of your identity and then to use each small win as a way to demonstrate that it is who you are on the inside. Really, it starts with a shift of mindset. With a new habit, reinforce this behavior by saying things like, I'm the type of person who loves to go running. Then, follow through by doing it on a daily basis. Eventually, your internal identity will match this new habit. So there you have it, the nine-step process to building a new habit. All right, everyone, nine steps. That's a lot of steps. No wonder we don't get habits that stick. Who got all nine? Who was able to write down and catch all nine? Mindy got them, Mary got them, Sybil. Anyone else? Roseanne, Gary, that's all I can see on this first screen. Laura gave me a thumbs up. Great, all right, so you at least now know the nine steps to habit formation, all right? So the whole point was for you to have a comprehensive overview, right? But we know that we want to probably simplify things. So um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share a PowerPoint and get into it. And we're gonna simplify it with the Ninja Five. And we're gonna simplify it, maybe, there we go, by talking about the Seinfeld method. So for those of you who took notes and got all nine, 
Number five, I believe, was the Seinfeld method. So if you can recall, or you wrote any notes down besides the Seinfeld method, what was the Seinfeld method? Does anyone know? Feel free to unmute, put it in the chat. What was the Seinfeld method? Don't break the chain. Don't break the chain. Did you know that before, Stephen, before you watched no. the video? No. That is an awesome takeaway. Anyone else have any other notes? Oh, I see Johnny and Rashna said, don't break the chain. Lois, never miss a day. Good job. Excellent job, guys, taking notes. That's perfect. That's absolutely what it is. So we want to simplify all of those nine steps into something easy to remember, okay? So the story goes that apparently Jerry Seinfeld shared with a young budding comedian the secret to Jerry Seinfeld's success. Now, whether you like Jerry Seinfeld or not, it's you, you really can't argue with the fact that he has been very successful in his field and of what he does. So with that, Jerry told this young budding comedian that he himself spends every morning writing new material until he has one new joke, okay? So obviously this is most important to him because this is what he does. This is what he loves, he's passionate about, this is how he makes his money. So it's important enough to him that he starts it in the morning, okay? Why might he start it in the morning? Anyone? No distractions. No distractions. No distractions. Who was that? Who said that? Danielle. <laughs> Danielle, you are absolutely right. That would have been my first reaction, too. It's so great what, to swallow the frog, too. There you go, Martina. Swallow that frog. Eat that elephant one bite at a time. Do the hard stuff first. Get it out of the way. You'll feel accomplished. It'll energize you. So Jerry Seinfeld saying, I did it in the morning, okay? I wrote material until I had, you know, one new joke, okay? The next thing he says is that I took a big calendar, put it on my wall, and I put these big red X's, okay? So it was important to Jerry Seinfeld that he visualized his success, his efforts, okay? So we can all do that, right? We can get a calendar of any type and record our successes. And then his ultimate goal was to not break the chain and have at least 66 days in a row. So is this easier to remember than all nine of those steps? Probably, okay. I hope so. So that's why we wanna focus on the Seinfeld method as we start to develop our new habit of implementing the Ninja Five and Ninja Selling Principle because the Ninja Selling Principle wants you to focus on not breaking the chain, okay? That no matter what the habit is that you are trying to implement, to formulate, to keep in your routine, that if we focus on doing it every single day and for at least 66 days, it will become part of our routine, part of our habit, okay? So if, if you don't remember anything about the nine steps, you don't remember the details Seinfeld. Remember, don't break the chain. Try to visualize and do it every single day. So let's start with our new habit formation, okay? And let's start with the morning routine. So, Jerry Seinfeld indicated that he wrote his material. My underwear. And <laughs> make sure it's only, Eric should be in there a little time and then they hang him up. Okay. Wendy, unmute yourself. Sorry. I did. I, did. I, had to, I had to mute everybody, so sorry. I, I saw, I saw. Poor Lois. We won't tell Lois what we heard. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is funny. I love this. <laughs> At least making me laugh, everyone. All right. So let's start our new habit formation with talking about our morning routine. The Seinfeld method with Jerry, at least, he wrote his material in the morning and we indicated that perhaps he chose the morning because there's no distractions. Perhaps in the morning you're energized and you're not depleted of your energy and you're motivated. Let's say you're motivated to start your day. Now for all of us, we have different morning routines. 
Some of us may have some rigid ones where we do the same thing at the same time every single day, while others of us may have a, a kind of loose and go with the flow and let's see how I'm feeling and how the day goes. But oftentimes the most successful real estate agents, their story is they get up early, they have an agenda and they stick to it. But most importantly, regardless of what your current morning routine is, my hope for you is that you start your day with passion. Passion for what you want to accomplish, passion for what you do, passion for making a difference in people's lives. Hopefully that's part of your why. Maybe your why is you know your family and that you get up every day and you focus on real estate to provide a better life for your family. But my goal for you is let's have a morning routine and start it with passion. If you don't have passion for what you do, it's going to be really challenging to meet our goals, develop good habits. Okay, right. any questions so far? Good? All right, so Ninja Selling teaches agents that want to be successful to start each day with a focus on what they call the Ninja Five, a morning routine that includes gratitude and affirmations, writing two personal notes, making sure you've time blocked your entire day and that you have an agenda that you stick to, and focusing on your hot and warm list. Okay, so this is the Ninja Five according to Ninja Selling Principles. So we're going to break each one down for you and let's start with gratitude and daily affirmations. Wendy, I'm gonna mute you for one second. Okay. okay. All right, gratitude and affirmations. I deserve good things. I am entitled to my share of- We can't see that. I refuse can't. to beat myself nope. up. Hold on. I am in a- What can you see? You. Oh. Well, let's try this again. What can you see now? Now I can see. Beautiful. All right, everyone. Hold on to your seats. Hold on to your hats. Are you ready for Stuart Smalley? I deserve good things. I am entitled to my share of happiness. I refuse to beat myself up. I am an attractive person. I am fun to be with. Daily Affirmation with Stuart Smalley. Stuart Smalley is a caring nurturer, a member of several 12-step programs, hear it. not a licensed therapist. I'm going to do a terrific show today. And I'm going to rock. And Beachwood, she goes, girl, you need Accutane. Oh my God. I got it. And six months later, she, you should see her skin. It's Wendy, unmute yourself. Was I muted the whole time? <laughs> no, uh, yes, I didn't hear anything you said after Stuart, sorry. Oh, all right. I know the video is really low in volume, so I'm gonna share it again and turn your volume all the way up if you can. Turn it all the way up. Before you share, can I remind everybody, please put your mute on. Okay, go ahead. All right, we'll try this again. Nancy heard everything. Good for you, Nancy. I'm glad. Nancy's with it. So I'm just going to rewind it just a little bit, just for the entertainment factor. He is a caring, nurturer, a member of several 12 step programs, but not a licensed therapist. I'm going to do a terrific show today. 
and I'm going to help people because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. All right, everyone. So those of you from a certain generation, raise your hand that you know Stuart Smalley. Raise your hand, do you know Stuart Smalley? <laughs> Stuart Smalley is from Saturday Night Live, everyone. And Stuart Smalley is actually a state senator now. So I don't know if it was just his character that made him popular amongst people or the daily affirmations, but he achieved great things. He went from Saturday Night Live as Stuart Smalley to now being a state senator. So why does ninja selling start with daily affirmations and gratitude? Why are we starting there? Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Steph, right on. Love it. Anyone else? Daily affirmations. You have Gratitude. to like yourself before anybody else will like you. Oh, Tracy. Tracy's all about the self-love. Nice job, Trace. Anyone else? Sometimes it's easier to believe the negative. So if you continue to tell yourself the positives, they'll get down deeper in your heart and soul, in your mind. Oh, it is, yes. It is always easier to believe in the negative. If you give a person two pieces of paper and you say, take one piece of paper and write down everything that's good about you and another piece of paper and write down everything that's bad, they're going to say on that second one, do you have more paper? Um, we, we have to find the good in ourselves. Absolutely. You all are spot on. We start with being thankful, having gratitude, focusing on what we have, not what we don't have. Um, being grateful with positive messages about ourselves and what we want to accomplish, who we are. This is pure psychology, folks. Okay? Pure psychology. Also the law of, universal law of attraction. That's right. Good job, Steph. The positive messages that are stimulated by us doing daily gratitude or affirmations makes our thoughts positive, right? And those thoughts are our words, and they will permeate throughout all that we are and all that we do if we keep them positive. So if you've part ever participated in any self-help program, right, self-improvement program, almost every single one of them asks you to write down a daily gratitude, something that you're thankful for, okay? So as part of the Ninja Five, they want you to remember to stay positive and focus on daily gratitude and affirmations. Easy to do you implement it. And the whole idea behind it is that our thoughts and our words will permeate into who we are and what we are. So I use this quote from Gandhi and I use it a lot in different uh, areas that I teach because it is pure psychology and this will enhance ourselves and our relations with others if we follow it. So if we stay positive in our words, it becomes our behaviors become good habits and that's what we're focusing on and our habits become our values and eventually our destiny whatever chart or route every path that you have uh, laid before yourself to get to success start here so that you can actually get there okay the second principle of the ninja five is time blocking your day okay Time blocking your day. If you have children or you've had children in the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years, you know that their schedules are typically time blocked. Okay, so they have math from nine to 10, they have English 10 to 11, or maybe they have three hours of math, who knows? But taking a look at how you actually manage your time. So the Ninja Selling pre Principle wants us to have a morning routine where our day is already time blocked and that we focus on what is most important, okay? So do you rule your day or does your day run you, okay? You can decide. So the recommendation is that you set your schedule the day before, 
Hey, before you finish your work day, before you leave the office, set your schedule for the next day on every hour or time block by two hours, whatever it might be, so that you can stay on your agenda and not let other things rule your time. So you'll have to do a little evaluation of yourself, your own time management, and whether you're good at it or not. But are your top priorities of the day actually in your schedule? Do you adhere to that schedule? Um, is actively prospecting in your schedule? Is your family time in your schedule? Okay? Make sure it's there so that we can focus on what is most important to us. So let's take a little deeper dive into how we might spend our time. So you have that writing utensil still and you have that piece of paper, use it or close your eyes and I want you to visualize, just take 30 seconds, and I want you to visualize the most perfect work day for you. And we are talking about real estate here. You may have another gig. Your perfect work day. And what does that look like for you moment from moment from the time that you open your eyes and start your day with passion until you close your eyes at the end of the night? What does it look like hour by hour for you? And what are you doing? Okay, so if you visualize what your perfect work day is and you know what it is, then you can strive towards creating an agenda that actually has those activities in it. So if I were a wagering person, you're all realtors, my guess is your perfect work day would have at least a few appointments in it with actual live sellers and buyers where you are either showing homes, listing a house, creating an agreement of sale, whatever it is, that at least half of your day is probably spent on income producing activities or activities where you're interacting with people, okay? Maybe you are a huge networker and you like to be interacting with people. Maybe your perfect work day looks like that. So whether you wrote it down or you visualized it, do this exercise to help you focus on where your time should be spent. And where our time should be spent, 80% of it is influencing other people. We're either on the phone or face-to-face -face in front of them, right? Okay, that's what our job is, to build relationships. So a recommendation as you start to time block your day and have an agenda you stick to is in the morning, schedule your calls. We call them first and 10, according to Michael Mayer in the book, Seven Levels of Communication. That's down at the bottom. So those of you who like to read, um, I highly recommend this book, Seven Levels of Communication. First and 10 calls, okay? The day before you leave the office or stop working for the day, who are your top priority calls, the 10 people the next day? And you do that immediately as soon as you get to the office, whether it's your sales office or whether it's your home office, whatever it is. So who are those people? The people that you are actually working with that week to show houses, referral sources, you know, co-op agents. So the list goes on and on. But write down who it is you're contacting and the reason that you're going to contact them the day prior so that your agenda is set. Okay. Another recommendation from the several levels of communication of how to spend your time is to actually map out when you're gonna return calls, when you're gonna return emails. Because I don't know about you, but our technology, our cell phones, our computers, they are a distraction, okay? Yes, they're a tool to help, but they are more of a distraction than anything. You can get sucked into your email all day long if you're sitting in front of your computer screen. You know those agents out there, some of them very successful, who actually put outgoing voicemails, outgoing emails that say your call or your email will be returned uh, between the hours of four and whatever. It's because they've set their agenda for the day and they're gonna focus on priorities, but letting people know, here's what I'm going to respond to you, okay? So that's what the you know schedule, the 11 and four as an example, or phone calls and emails. And we want you to focus on setting parameters around the time that you are gonna call people. This recommends that you spend at least four hours per week focusing on people in your database that you don't have to 
to call, but should call, okay? So you have all those have to calls, but all those people that you should call, people that uh, you've worked with in the past, networking contacts, family, friends, your sphere of influence that should be the database, the lifeblood of your business, schedule to make those calls every day, at least four to five hours a week, calling it your hour of power. If you like these concepts, check out the book, Seven Levels of Communication. And we mentioned being in the influential zone. So this is a communication pyramid. And basically, it gives all the different steps and aspects of our relations with others, the things that we fill our time with, the things that we do. While all of these things are important and they help us to connect and build rapport and strengthen our relationships, the most impactful aspect of our communication is at the very top, okay? The phone calls, the virtual meetings, the networking events, and the one-on-one -on -one personal meetings like listing appointments, buyer appointments, okay? That's where we wanna spend 80% of our time. So are we filling our schedule with those activities 80% of the time? Each section is important, but if you want to influence, you want to sell, if you want people to make a decision, we want to be right up here at the top. Now I wanna draw your attention to the center section here, the connection zone. The connection zone is going to help lead us into the persuasion zone. So all of these things that we're doing, the text messages, the video emails, the handwritten notes, the letters with enclosures, make sure that we're having call to action in it so that we can lead to a phone call, to a face-to-face, -to, -face, to a lunch, whatever it is, okay? So the next step in the Ninja Five is to write two handwritten personal notes every single day, okay? Part of your morning routine, whether you put the, the note cards on your computer um, keyboard, put it under or on top of your coffee cup or your K cups, put it in your car, wherever, so that as a visual reminder, I have to do this before anything else, okay? So Ninja5 says write two handwritten personal notes every day. So here are the seven steps to writing a personal note or what I call a power note, okay? Now, handwritten notes are going to last much longer and have a greater impact on people than most anything else. So step number one, use unbranded note cards, okay? Do not use Howard Hanna note cards. People do not want to be sold. This is not why you are writing the message. So use unbranded cards, go to the dollar store. You can get a pack of eight or 10 of them for a dollar. Get one that symbolizes your personality on the front of it or what have you, okay? So unbranded is the first step. The second step is that you actually handwrite and you use blue ink, okay? The reason for the blue ink because it tends to be more positive um, and it tends to be original. People see that you actually wrote it, they can tell, okay? When you're writing, you wanna focus on words such as you and your. You're focusing on the other person. So you want to try, it's very challenging, it's gonna take practice. You wanna to try to avoid words like I, me, and mine, okay? It will be challenging, but once you get going and practicing it, it'll become second nature. Now the next step is you wanna praise that person, okay? What do you really like about them? Did you recently have a conversation or see them and they have a great sense of humor and they always make you laugh? Do you want to identify something about them? You know, are they successful? Do they have a great family life? Are they caring? Are they um, outgoing? Whatever it is about the person that you truly love and is a unique quality about them, you want to praise them about that and tailor your message in there, okay? So something to the effect of, I really loved our conversation the other day. You are such an upbeat and positive person. I would love to aspire to be as, you know, as positive as you are. Something to that effect, okay? So praise them for a specific characteristic, okay? Um, so that's part of three and four. And number five, 
Your handwriting does matter just like your words matter. And so the recommendation is to write at an angle up towards the right, okay? This is based upon psychology, folks. If you want more information about it, you can read the book by Mala Rogers, Your Handwriting Can Change Your Life, but write with a slope up to the right. I don't know what it is, but apparently it is something positive and I do it naturally in my writing. I don't like it because it's not straight, but I do. I, I naturally go up to the right. So for whatever reason, it has a positive impact psychologically on the recipient. And then number six, your PS, your postscript, your call to action, whether that's, you know, call me please, whether that is let's get together for lunch or dinner, let's have a play date, whatever it is, you want that personal note to inspire them to take action, to increase the quality of your next contact with them, okay? It's all relationship building. We wanna bring our relationship to the next level. So the seventh step is you wanna write these to everybody, okay? Don't leave anyone out, okay? It can be someone you just met today. It could be a home inspector or a home appraiser that did a really good job and you know, handled your client well and had good communication with you, whatever it is. But find a person, identify a real positive characteristic you want to acknowledge, write the note, show gratitude, and start with two a day, okay? That's what Ninja says, start with two a day. Um, seven levels of communication says 50 a week. We'll get your phone ringing and we'll create um, a lots of success in your business. Okay, so power notes, very easy to do. Anyone have any questions about the power note? Good with that? All right, four and five of the Ninja Selling Five is to focus on your warm and hot list. So who are you going to call? All right, how are we gonna spend our time? What's a warm list? What's a hot list? So your hot list is probably pretty evident to you. These are the people that you are working with immediately in the present or soon to be working with in the near future. So they're likely to buy or sell in the next 90 days. These are people that you have had some connection with, whether it's virtually, whether it's through social media, whether it's, you know, meeting them at a social event. They are also people that you should be thinking about as you're looking at properties, okay? So as new properties hit the market and they're popping up and you're checking them out online or you're going to see them, who might be a good fit for that property, okay? Whether they're looking to buy or sell now or in the future. So these are examples of people on your hot list, okay? So one of the Ninja Five, focus on your hot list. Who am I going to call? I'm going to call people that are on my hot list. The next step is people on your warm list. Well, what's the difference between warm and hot? Well, your warm list are people that may be a little further out than buying or selling in the next 90 days, okay? People that you need to be staying in touch with, increasing the quality of your relationship with so that they do remember you and that you're top of mind so that when they aren't ready in a year, year and a half, it's your shoe in, okay? There are also people that you feel that you need to add more value, that you need to increase the quality of your relationship with to better serve them in what they do or to help you out in your business, okay? So have you taken your sphere of influence list, your database, whether it's Engage CRM or wherever it may be, have you identified who are your A's, your ambassadors, your B's, your buddies, and your C, everyone else who really need to become your buddies, okay? Make sure you take a look at that database and work it to its full potential and identify how often people need to be touched as far as communication goes and how, so that you have a plan, okay? And these warm people should move to your hot list at some point if we're staying in touch frequently enough to know that their circumstances have changed, that they are now more of a priority and on your hot list, okay? Any questions about number four and five, your warm and hot list? Okay, here's just another funnel example again. 
if you're cold, warm, and hot, we want to spend our time with the hot and warm because they're the people who already know us, like us, hopefully love us, and will learn to trust us. That's where we want to spend the bulk of our time, warm and hot. But of course, we have to develop that cold too. We have to grow our sphere. We have to meet new people and add them to our database. So this is just a picture representation for you to try to remember your cold, your warm, your hot leads. And so let's take a minute and let's talk about phone calls. A little recap, if you will. The cell phone, the mobile phone, the smartphone, if you look at data, it is the least used item as far as phone calls go, okay? We all have them but we don't use them as actual telephones, okay? We use them for everything, but actually talking to people, okay? So we have this fear sometimes of talking to people because it's easier to text, it's easier to email. Um, sometimes we have our own brain blocks, if you will, to say, I don't wanna bother them, or they're working and they're busy. Well, guess what? If they are, they won't answer the phone and you'll leave a message. So don't have call reluctance. Go into all of your calls with this idea of trying to help them. Focusing always on Ford. Do you remember Ford, everyone? Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Focusing on the other person and what they're interested in and trying to find a way that you might be able to help them. If you focus solely on that and making your calls, you won't have call reluctance, okay? There won't be a fear of rejection. So with your first and tens, if you start your day off right, calling those most important people and then setting an hour aside to call all those people you don't need to, but should call, go into those calls with a heart to help, okay? Don't talk about business. If they ask about business, that's wonderful. That means that you are top of mind in what you do. But focus your attention on trying to find a way to help them by the end of your call, okay? And set aside this time weekly and then rank how your calls are actually going. Your goal is that every single person that you call, that the conversations get better and better and enjoyable such that when they see your name pop up on their phone, they want to answer it, okay? So that's our goal with spending our time with phone calls, focusing on our warm and hot list. And so the last aspect is the tool, okay? We want you to track your success. Seinfeld says, I need a visual tracking of my success. So we have a tool for you called the Ninja Scorecard. And I will email all of this out to you, whether you use it or not, that will be your prerogative based upon your goals and your habit formation. But what the Ninja Scorecard is going to do is going to give you a visualization of what Ninja Selling says. If you do these things every single day and you do it for an extended period of time, the business will come. So what's on the Ninja Scorecard? You might not be able to read it so clearly on the left, but on the right, you can see all of the items that you can track on a daily basis to help you visualize that you're actually doing them, to hold yourself accountable to doing them so you can develop good habits. So did you write a daily affirmation or what you're thankful for? Did you write two power notes for the day? Attending meetings? Are you setting your folks up on drip campaigns or email campaigns, postcard campaigns in your CRM? Do you have sales flows set up in your CRM to remind you of things to do and have automation for reminders going out, emails going out, okay? Are you continuing to tour and being the market expert in your neighborhood, in your farm, wherever it is that you want to do business, okay? Did you make your phone calls? Phone calls are important, but more importantly, did you actually have conversations? Okay, so these are the 13 things that are on the first page of the scorecard. It gives you points for the days that you actually complete it so that you can give yourself a score, a kind of reward every week. And you wanna strive for as many points as possible, but it's a great tracking tool to help you develop the habit to build your business and success. 
the next page of your scorecard is the people that you're going to call. Okay, setting it up. Who are they? The date you call them, and what's your follow up going to be? Okay, because follow up is so important, and we often lack in that department. If we want to be successful, then we need to do the follow up. And then the third page of your scorecard is a place for you to track who you wrote your personal notes to. Okay, who you wrote your personal notes to, what date did you write it, and what was the reason for the writing? Okay, was it a thank you? Was it a birthday? Was it, you know, a condolence? Was it, you know, congratulations? Whatever it was. Okay, unsolicited CMA. Are you? Being the market expert, are you giving all your neighbors information on their homes and what their home could be worth and the potential buyers that you have, okay? Tracking that. And then your database, are you maintaining it? Are you working it? What new people are you adding to it? Your open houses should be on your list of things to do for prospecting for new clients, sellers or buyers. Are you holding them? Okay, and which ones? And what's the follow-up? What was the result? How many people did I convert? How many people are now in my database? And then opportunity time. People are skeptical about opportunity time, but um, during my uh, new agent fast start training, it seems that every new agent has a piece of business coming from opportunity time. So if you haven't held it in a while, you may want to reconsider it for your 2021 goals because yes, the phones are still ringing. Yes, people are still walking in when they see the offices are open. So it is a great source of business if you make it a habit and track it. And so in summary, your Ninja Five, daily practices for agent success according to Ninja Selling, which is wildly popular. People love Ninja. And when they take the ninja program, they do well. So gratitude and affirmations, writing personal notes, time blocking your day and being in control of it, staying on task, and then focusing on your hot and your warm list. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Any comments? Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. Do you want the tool? Yes. Yes. Well, of course you do. So I will be emailing you all the tool. I believe um, it comes in an Excel format. So you can use it over and over. It, it may also be in PDF format, but it'll actually be usable. Okay. I know that a lot of successful teams, team leaders use a tool just like this as they are developing their team, whether they're bringing new agents on or um, just for accountability when they meet with each person on their team on a weekly basis, they actually have a scorecard where they track how they're doing and they rate how they're doing so that they have goals to strive towards. It helps with accountability. All right, everyone, that's all I got. Hopefully I, I kept your attention. Hopefully it was useful information. I'm happy to see your faces. Thank you for joining. Uh, we wish you a successful 2021. Now go out and sell something. Yep, we'll send you the Thank PowerPoint you. along with the uh, tool. Bye, Thank guys. So Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Maggie. Bye. Bye. Bye.